Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about FLCL Season 3 to wrap it all up in a nice little marble. If that's what you want to call it. Uh, but before that, we touched on Tom Hanks, Johnny Depp, on whether or not we believe <laughs> who and what are wholesome as all hell. And uh, dabbled in a little bit of controversies here and there along with everything else. So if you want to catch part of that wider conversation, uh, patreon.com slash featured anime podcast, a dollar a month will actually get you all that bonus content. Plus the bonus episodes that are going to be coming out exclusively for our patrons. So FLCL, which was my choice. And I am going to say I am, I, I feel like I was yet again let down by what it was, but let down or, or expected to be let down both. Uh, it was produced by Toho visual entertainment. Uh, okay. studio was production. IG nut and Revo Root for the studios. It's an original, uh, genres are action avant-garde comedy, sci-fi mecca and parody. And it was six episodes. Yes. Now, did you happen to watch it in English or Japanese? I watched it subbed. So I didn't watch it subbed. I watched it dubbed. What I found really interesting, what I liked a lot, was season one and season three are 18 years apart, at least in the dubbed. And they got the same voice actors. And I don't know if you're aware or not, but the voice actor, the female voice actor who does how do how do how do how do how do how do yeah, um, that was actually her first gig into um, voice acting. Uh, if you watch it on, on YouTube, there's, they've got like little blurbs and extras specifically with the Fuli Kuli voice actors from Japan, from the, the, the original Japanese and the dubbed. And I, I might have watched that. I, I don't think you did, but um, it was really cool. I they were talking about how they they're trying to incorporate the feeling of the first season into the series, into the th third one. And they did a few secondary ones. I didn't watch the secondary in, in sub. I watched it in dub, but I thought it was really good. I thought compared to what I was expecting light years ahead of what I was expecting, because I'm not granted. I'm not expecting a lot from Fooly Cooly season one, two or three. They are uh, abstract. I think would be a very fair term. Because you walk away with what you what you assume, so like it's it's not something that everyone's gonna walk away with. Oh, that's what that meant. That's what that meant. Okay, that's cool. It's more one of those things where you show up, and I'd say you're lucky to take something away. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. I mean, it at the heart of it, I feel like it's someone fighting against the education system because everyone in season one, two, and three, they're in school. And if you look at this in a very cold hearted way, school in these shows are designed to make you conform to a certain way of thinking. So, and that's what the iron kind of represents of smoothing everything out so that everything's the same and everyone thinks the same. Mm -hmm. So and it's usually when everyone's like about to leave high school going into college, which when I went there, you're here to learn. You're here to challenge your own ideals. Your ideas make it, you know, hypothesis, experiment, solution kind of thing. You had the scientific method, all that stuff for, for damn near everything. With math, you had what you thought was the answer. You did the experiments. You did all the math required to get to the right answer. And if they matched, congratulations. If they didn't, then do it again. Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas now I had a sibling go to college. And it's not the same teacher, obviously. And it's not even the same school, if I'm being honest. It's a, across the state. But when my sibling was there, they were horrified because what I told them to expect, they didn't even get. And I didn't know how to, I, I didn't really believe her. And I showed up to her class and sat through a thing. And I'm like, they're talking at you. They're giving you the answers. They're not letting you think for yourself. Yeah. Granted, it was an English class, but when I took my English class, we read Midsummer's Night Dream, and we were told to interpret it 
our own way to tell us what we got out of it. Right. But this is kind of irrelevant of the map. You know, I mean, like we can't compare the classes there versus here or anything like that. No, I, I, I but what I'm trying to say is like the, the difference, I think the difference of what is our perception versus the show's perception. I think the show so, could be seen as a way to have everyone conform to a certain way of thinking. So no one steps out of line. Sure. Okay. Uh, I disagree with that. Uh, oh. Simply because have you seen the the fact that they just decide that they want to create a spaceship out of bottles and then decorate it as all hell and everyone's kind of just going every which way for it? It's yeah. not so much that everyone's trying to go a particular way or conform to a role. There's people migrating to mars from earth yeah. because of everything that's going on i mean like that again doesn't speak to to everyone needs to maintain a mold or anything like that uh, same thing with uh Mot motoyama how sh she is she is a uh construction worker she does design and everything like that yeah, that doesn't working her ass off yeah that doesn't say that she's being molded to to conform to a particular standard Hijiri, uh, same thing, how she is and how she views relationships uh, doesn't speak to how you need to be molded or how they are molded into a particular section or way. Uh, same I thing agree. with uh, Tomomi. Tomo it's, not, it's not that they're rebelling. They're also high school students. They haven't hit college yet. They haven't had... Yeah, and? They're, 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 it's not that they're rebelling. They're just doing their thing. I mean, if they're conforming to the norm, the basketball team having lost every <laughs> single game. 60 something in a row. 62, I think it was. Something like that. I mean, if that says that they're conforming, they're all, everyone there is just doing a really horrible job. They're all equal in losing. <laughs> they, they all equally suck at a lot of different things. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to go with. I mean, I mean, like, I don't see them conforming or trying to adhere to a particular standard or, or them rebelling against the powers that be. It's just them being teenagers, them going about their lives and everything like that. And even the teacher was just like, kind of like, whatever, I don't care kind of guy is a feeling that I yeah. got. So, I felt like he was he was looking at it like a lost cause, like he's got unruly students because he's begging them to fill out paperwork. Yes. He's begging them to show up. He's like, I which, want this to succeed, but nobody else is helping me here. Right. Which is understandable, though. I mean, everyone, you know, even in, in high school, no matter what high school where you go, it's like, I want you to do great in my class. So please. And then you eventually, if this teacher is just worn down by certain classes, they just like, you know what? Whatever. Screw it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I think but, you're talking about the classes I was in. <laughs> uh, oh, it was every class for me. Um, but you know, that's, that's my viewpoint. So I can't, I can't agree with you in that. Everyone's like being trying to mold it into a very particular way. It's like, I just feel like it, it, it the objective of that particular iron was to smooth the world out. And in season one, that when you smooth something out, everyone thinks the same way smooth brained ideas i think is what they were trying to go with which yes. well, i believe indicates lack of intelligence sure but it wasn't just one iron no it was several irons yes it was, it was across the world it, and they weren't yeah. just it wasn't just ironing out ideas it was it was literally ironing like everything out yeah. right so that that being said it's an interesting view on the mentality and interactions in between these four people, because in this one, I don't think that there was one particular pivotal main character. Main character. Like Kana was the, the main character, main, main character. But I feel yeah. like, uh, Motoyama, Hijiri, yeah. Tomomi all got their shot. They all had their equally important, dedicated episode, basically, which, yeah. I thought it was really well done. The Well, it was a unique way to put things because it's only, like we said, six episodes. Yes. So dedicating one or two episodes to one character is ballsy. Yes. It's not really going to move the story forward, but it, it's it, it's a ballsy move. 
it moved and the story it forward off. in its own way. Like I think it, it paid out really well because it made you feel for these characters, kind of. Yeah. Especially when you needed them to. Yeah. So I'll tell you this right now, though. Tomomi, was it me or did she look like a uh, anime version of Peppermint Patty from Charlie Brown? <laughs> oh yeah. I didn't make that connection till now. When I when I first saw Tomomi, my thought instantly, Rick, like the second I saw her, I was like, that's Peppermint Patty. Hey. <laughs> Every single time, I was just expecting a well, you know, Chuck. It's all right, Chuck. <laughs> it's okay, Chuck. <laughs> Straight up, I was expecting uh. Expecting that. That would have been good. That would have been interesting to say the very least. So <laughs> that would have been hilarious. It, it would have been great if it actually happened or if they had like how they did in the first season where they parodied or made fun of South Park. <laughs> it would have been great if they did something similar with Charlie Brown. So what I noticed is I think season one didn't have a high budget. So they kind of had to piecemeal it together. And I'm guessing South Park graphics were easier to do. Season two, I'm assuming, I'm assuming season two looked better. Looked a hell of a lot better. Looked. Crisper, cleaner, story not so much. And then season three, I've got zero complaints when it comes to the, the imagery on how everything was drawn, how everyone looked. I've got no complaints whatsoever. I am a huge fan of that style uh, that, that when they turn realism into kind of anime realism rather than cartoony. Um, well, the interesting thing is, is both season one or FLCL alternative and FLCL progressive progressive being season two is they actually came out at the same time. They both came out in 2018. Yeah. The difference is and they both had production IG as a studio. What's different is uh, season two had Signal MD and production good book for stu for additional studios. Alternative had Nut and Revo Root. So I'm going to season one. It was a uh, season one was production IG and Ganix. Ganix has a reputation from what I've seen anyways, to be a little bit more rough, earthy, I want to say. Okay. Uh, Revo Rue, um, I think they're, I, I don't think we've even seen anything by them aside from this. I think they're actually relatively new to the, to the world, but I know Nut, Nut's been, I've seen, uh, some of Nut and they did, they helped work on, uh, Tanya, uh, the Saga of Evil. Yes. Yeah. So, but I, I. You know what? Hang on. Let me actually pull it up. Let me see what else they've worked on. Is there a second on. season coming out of that? Uh, so, Nut. So, Revo Root literally is a new studio. They've worked on this one. Slime. Uh, I've been cl killing slime for the last 300 years. Uh, that was a good one. I liked that one. Deep Blue Song, Babylon, and one other one. And then Nut. They've only, basically, aside from this and Decadence... Uh, have only worked on Tana, uh, Tanya, the Saga of Evil, and that includes the movie, second season, which is coming out, other OV and the OVAs for it. And then uh, basically that's all they've ever worked on was this, Decadence, and Tanya, the Saga of Evil. Interesting. All right. So both of those are really new. Both of those have not really worked on anything so well i mean i'm looking forward to what they do next because the saga of eel tanya that was a good one mm -hmm. this anime style not bad so hopefully it carries over onto more other stuff true oh, um also i realize going back to last week's episode i say amoniplex it was pointed out that it's not amoniplex however are you sure it was last, you, last week? Because uh, was I'm it last week? Was no, it two it was weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Ah, dear Lord. It was pointed out this week, so that's all I got. <laughs> that's, that's what I know. Um, even though it's spelled Amniplex or Aniplex, mm -hmm. would it Aniplex? Correct. 
when I listen to it and it comes through, I hear Amniplex, which is why I thought it was Amniplex. Kind of like Hulk Hogan? You know, we're going to bring this up, are we? <laughs> okay. Let's go down this road. <laughs> Hulk Hogan or Hulk Hogan. They mean the exact same thing. And to a kid who couldn't differentiate when someone's screaming, oh my God, it's Hulk Hogan. You're not going to be like, oh, no, no, sir, 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 sir. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. There's a space there. You, you know, to your credit, Katz also hears it as Amniplex. Oh, good. So you're not the only good. one. You're not the only one. At the very least, there is someone else that <laughs> joined you <laughs> in hearing it as Amniplex. So Ugh. I apparently so far, as far as the people that I know, <laughs> hear it the correct way and and, uh -huh. and can read it. The, I'm just saying. I'm just uh -huh. saying. I'm just, so. it's one of those things that, well, it's one of those weird sounding things when you read it, it's like red. And when you listen to it, it says like dread or something like that, or, or gray and blue. It's one of those weird things that if you read it, that's what you hear versus when you listen to it, you hear what it really is trying to say. Okay. It's okay. I'll, 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 I'll take that. All right. <laughs> um, that going right back to it though, really, really quick. I um, like, I like, I like this. Cats just said, "Oh, I can read it." <laughs> but they do illiterate. say it. Oddly. I can read it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, mean, <laughs> look, I can read. Look, 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 well, we know he can. <laughs> uh, you, it's still questionable. I mean, like, uh, grant, granted, you, you know, you like. Uh, I do all right. I do, do all okay. right. You do. I okay. can words well sometimes. <laughs> I, I English good. I promise. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, uh, going right back, going right back. <laughs> to it really quick to 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 FLCL alternative. Um, I thought the the animation style, like you were saying, was pretty clean. It was nice. It was definitely here. But here's something else I noticed. Okay, season one showed right. the dad. Season two oh. showed the mom. Remember at the end when we were saying it, and I said. I want to see both. I want everything. Apparently, they knew that they I would you. want this. They knew that this. They that, heard you exactly. So <laughs> we actually see both mom and dad in season three. Oh so, man, I can't complain. I can't complain. We saw both the parents this time for the main main uh, character, not yeah. for all of them, for 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 at least one of them. So you know what. I'm going to pat well, myself we, on the since, back for that when I got everything I wanted. Since, since we got to use our algorithms and our experiences to learn and, and whatnot, because we see both parents, does that really make it a main character? Because we saw one girl, the pretty, uh, not the pretty one, the, the one with the hairpin. We didn't see her dad, but her dad was supposedly crazy and her mom was just as nuts. I don't know about you, but that screams main character energy. Hang on, hang on. Motoyama screams main character energy because you only see one and they have a bunch of siblings. <laughs> and hang on, hang on. Hijiri had no parents show up at all in this. So, whoo. So, Battle to the bulge here. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Can't, I mean, you're look, right. Look. I hate to say it. You're right. So they, they covered their bases. <laughs> they covered their bases. A little bit, kind of, sort of. Peppermint Patty, though, brutal. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll never be able to see that the same. I, like the, I, I, I'm telling you, the second I saw that, I was like, she's mo modeled after Peppermint Patty, hundred percent, hundred percent. There is no way she is not modeled after Peppermint Patty. Oh. So. Yeah. Well, I do have a kind of a question for you. Just, just, just a kind of question. There was an extreme lack of vehicles being driven without drivers you notice that yeah in season three season two there was one chick who just sat in the backseat always and mm -hmm. the car knew what to do and then in season three well they also kept referencing season in season two beware of the woman with the vespa and in this yeah. one vespa really wasn't there but they they had a food truck true well i mean they kind of decked out uh i don't know if they decked out the vespa or not but like it didn't have as much of a wallop as it did before it had no wallop it 
So this one didn't, this one didn't have the same, I want to say fun, passion, panaz as uh, season one for sure. Oh, hundred percent. They, they, they're chasing the dragon on this one. They're, they're trying real hard to make it better than what it is. I also want to say that this one was a little bit more serious than the other ones as well, simply because it was wrapping up. And in case you were still wondering, Rick, in case you're still thinking about it, they confirmed again that Haruko is an alien. And 17. 19. 19. 19. 19 forever. Forever. Uh, And that she is actually a part of of the uh, Galactic Space Patrol Brotherhood Stellar Fraternity type thing, whatever. So she uh, she is a law enforcement officer for space that comes to Earth just to mess things up for whatever reason. I, I mean, this is the, honestly one of the things that I found most disappointing about this is before she came to Earth or she was at Earth for a very specific purpose for a particular individual. Okay. And this one, she wasn't. It, it felt like she was just kind of there this time to to have some fun, and that's about it. She wasn't really there to serve a real purpose. It felt like she was there to fight more than it was to find her lost love. And it just so happened to be her lost love was right there. So... Yeah. I don't know. The, this one, I, I just feel like this one was a bigger letdown for me personally. It did lack direction and it didn't have a clear cut ending. But it also didn't have uh, the mantra of this is a normal day. Nothing ever exciting happens here. Meanwhile, they're... I mean, like, that that's honestly what it felt like. It felt like when something was going on and they <laughs> backtracked to someone else, it was a uh, meanwhile in the back cave. It's like, okay, well, it just it felt kind of it just felt odd because it was like a meanwhile in the back cave type of scenarios all the time. I get that. And I have no idea how to rectify that. Well, but obviously not. You didn't write the story. You didn't direct it. You did, you did nothing. True. Of course you can't fix it. Otherwise we wouldn't be having this discussion right now, Rick. <laughs> you'd be you'd be back there fixing wow. all these problems. Why'd you get all serious all of a sudden? The eyes, the eyes said it all. Look, I'm just saying, Crazy just saying, eyes. Peppermint Patty right. and I are going to go over there. We're going <laughs> to kick some butt. <laughs> oh, God. And a baseball bat. Exactly. Football. Exactly. All right, so my biggest problem with this was it didn't move the story in an appropriate trajectory until really close to the end. I would say maybe two episodes to the end. And then they're like, oh, crap, it's going to end. We got to hurry up. It worked, kind of. Yeah. It gave an ending, kind of, but I don't know. Like, my my best my best answer, my best everything was, I got to treat them like separate stories. They're not connected other than how do, 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 how do. And loosely at that, I think she finally found the one she was looking for, only to realize that it evolved in a different manner than she was expecting, you know? Yeah. I, I get that. I get that. But I don't know. I think like for this time, I, uh, she provided she played more to be an instigator in between multiple people to try and derive certain emotions out of them or out of our main main character this time, more so than anything else for Haruko. OK, I can see that. And again, you know, this also takes place at some indiscriminate point in the future, because in the second one. They weren't it's going to. Well, we know it's Earth. Mm-hmm. They said it Our was Earth. Continents are all wrong. Doesn't matter. We never said it was Earth in our timeline. I mean, like, uh, do we? Do we? Or not in our timeline? Let me phrase yeah. in <laughs> our realm of well, reality. Do Do you know where there's a giant iron in Japan, Hong Kong, U.S., China, anything like that? Because they had those flags shown there, but that doesn't mean it wasn't Earth. Yeah, I was gonna say they were all down. So, so um, we, we know it was, we know it was Earth because they they said it was Earth. They even reference, what are you doing back in back on Earth, Haruko? So, 
I don't know. I don't get why she, the this chick, seems to be the only one to be able to reach into people's heads and drag out the power. Because she hits them with a guitar or a vehicle in an attempt to kill them because in the first and second episode, she was surprised, in case you forgot, that they were still alive after she hit them. Yeah. Was she, though? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Gave them CPR yeah. and they were okay. Yeah, they were okay. I'm all right. Ba-da, ba-da, ba-da. <laughs> Only Jack gives a CPR. Sure. We could do that. <laughs> all right, sir. So beyond beyond that, I, I genuinely don't really have too much more to say. Other than the fact that this one actually didn't have an opening theme, really, for any episode. No, no. Kind of jumped right into it. I sometimes wish books would do that. I sometimes wish anime would do that. I sometimes sometimes wish the essays I write would do that. But there's like nothing. There's like, hey, guess where you're at? You're here. Okay, cool. And you got to draw from your past experience from the other shows to be like, all right, we're looking for this person. Which is why when the Vespa finally showed up, I was like, yes, I was looking for that. That is the one thing I was waiting for. And yeah, and then the we found out how they get <laughs> we found out how they get their axes. You gotta drag it out of Randos. Well, obviously. I mean like that's what happened in the first one, that's what happened in the second one too. So that I mean like how else are you gonna get your uh, uh, gas powered electric guitar? She's like, this is a sixty nine fender. Woo! Let me go smash some stuff with it. Oh right. Great. Hey. Right. Well uh I think we're I think we're about ready to wrap up, sir. What do you think? I agree. Uh, my rating for this is probably going to maintain a seven. If I go any lower, I think it'll it started pretty high. I don't think it increased. I also don't think it decreased. As far as the ending goes, it could have been done better, but I feel like there was a conclusion there. There was a conclusion. I do agree with you on that, which is why I'm going to go with a five. Oh. Because it did give it an actual conclusion. But beyond that, I wasn't feeling it. It felt like they were just chasing after the magic of the first one. They tried too hard and it just didn't. I feel like it just didn't work out. I I feel like, I don't know, it was just kind of there. And how they chose to Mm. wrap everything up was just really lackluster for me. I can see that. I can see that for someone like yourself who's dedicated to like i'm not going to call it completionism but pretty close every game you've played you've almost got a perfect completion rating on it no oh, no nah. not anymore that's long since not done anymore. that's that's long since been dead uh no i just prefer an ending i prefer prefer an ending so next week sir is your choice and since we're going we're in october how about uh something a little a horror like spooky spooky scary Uh, unlike my face (laughs) you know what i'm gonna let the first choice be yours uh but i will ask that you make it a movie you don't want the first choice it is your choice sir i don't know any scary movies or any like horror horror movies to begin with i'm not that that's usually not my thing i like comedy i like action so okay what do you got uh let's uh let's take a look see what i can't find here hang on one second <laughs> all right let's uh let's see what we got uh i don't know i'm kind of like uh i'm kind of at a loss here for horror anime movies <laughs> i'm not the only one let's see here we how about vampire hunter d or blood the Va- last vampire both of those are movies both of those are vampire horror movies which really honestly fits right into this uh realm so let's do vamp let's do let's do vampire hunter d okay uh vampire hunter d uh will be well actually vampire hunter d bloodlust i think is the full name works for me that'll be next week's choice genres for it are in case you're wondering action adventure drama fantasy horror romance sci-fi and it came out in the year 2000 nice okay so it's fairly it's not new new but it, it's not old enough to have bad graphics yeah well that's all the time that we have for today hope you enjoyed this week's choice unlike me who didn't really enjoy it too too much <laughs> but if you feel like we did 
too much justice, not enough justice, didn't cover it right or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. Reach out to us at featured anime podcast at gmail.com at those anime guys on Twitter at featured anime podcast on Facebook. Join us in our discord. We're always hanging out in there. Or at least I am uh, lurking around in there. Uh, feel free to hit us up in there. If you want to buy some merch shop dot featured anime podcast.com, or if you want to support the podcast, help us grow, get bonus content and soon bonus episodes, patreon.com slash featured anime podcast. Until next time. I'm Jack. I'm Rick, and I hope you can find your Vespa lady later. <laughs>